Welcome to Make Pods Great Again. I'm your host, John Woolley, back tonight with my bestie, Nikki. Nikki, how are you? Oh, I'm good. How's it going? Well, it's been <laughs> uh, a little bit of a stressful 24 hours, but thank God for mobility movement. I know. <laughs> for who's the sponsor of the show tonight, because like, no, this is the no doubt is i know it's a sales pitch it's an ad for them I know. but I swear to god it's like, so real <laughs> i need some zen in my life and they are helping me with some zen in my life because it has been a stressful 24 hours i know i know and you know when we first started working with them um it was kind of a joke right because we were like oh we always joke about not doing mobility not having time for it and john's ankle mobility sucks and whatever but um then you know they they came to us and actually explained the program and how it affects your central nervous system and how you use it for holistic health you know mind body awareness all that stuff stuff. And I just thought, oh, that sounds nice. Like, sounds like something I should totally get into. And given the, the way the last weekend went, like, thank goodness for some program that I can get into to just calm my mind for 10 minutes. If, if I pick a, a short 10 minute program, like sometimes that's all I have time for or all I can stand before I want to like get back to my phone and look at it again. But for that 10 minutes, like if I follow mobility movement, then I just know I have a second to like slow my system down and return to a, a center of gravity before I implode again. <laughs> well, and I think that's the thing, like, you know, even though, you know, as we'll get into the podcast, like all the craziness going on in the CrossFit world, um, you know, I'm still doing my workouts, which is stressful mm -hmm. in my body enough. Right. So I have a full-time job, which is extremely stressful in my body. And then I literally getting hundreds of DMS and posts and whatever a day, <laughs> oh my God. like I'm just stressed out. So this is, it is absolutely helping, uh, you know, kind of calm my central nervous system and just, you know, recover mentally and emotionally and physically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if anybody else needs that, we have a promo code for you. Uh, you can use MPGA, MPGA 25, give you 25% discount on the first invoice for any of the reoccurring memberships. And uh, the monthly membership with discount is 745 after the trial period. If you get the six month membership, is 4274 after the trial period. So obviously that six month uh, membership is a much better deal, but we know a lot of you guys, you know, don't want to do a six month thing. So you can get a discount on both. So MPG um, 25. Issues. Yes. <laughs> Commitment issues like me. So yes. you guys have those same issues. Use the uh, promo code for mobility movement. You can find it on all your favorite apps. So. With that done, let's talk about uh, the weekend. It's been fun. Wow. Uh, everything I know has burned to the ground. <laughs> yeah. No, Not everything. I'm being dramatic. But no, it was, it's been one hell of a weekend. I mean, already we're sort of like in this point of craziness in the world with coronavirus and then, you know, all of the rioting and, and the people, the marches and everything that's been like really causing what I think is an, a real revolution right now has also been on the forefront of everyone's mind. And then oh, this CrossFit bomb also explodes. Am I allowed to say I told you so? I can't, right? Is it too <laughs> yeah. early? Is it too no, soon? You can. you can. I fully support you. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. Like I didn't see this coming. No, um, me either. I, not, like, not like this. I mean, you know, for those that have, I know we probably have a lot of new people listening for this, but you know, for those that have been following, like clearly I've been posting for the last week or so that CrossFit has a diversity problem. And I, at the time, firmly believe that, you know, I'd seen some stuff going on in the CrossFit community. There was a, um, a CrossFit brand that had made a racial slur and it just kind of got blown over and we don't even need to really get into that. But it occurred to me at the time, it was like, nobody really blinked at this very much, you know, mm. and. And I started looking around and I'm like, man, everybody in my gym looks just like me, which mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. They just do. And I started thinking back to my nine years of experience. I'm like, man, I've been to, I mean, no, no doubt, Nikki, I've, I guarantee you I've been to 50 gyms Same. in the time I've been here. I've been to six Same. sanctionals, the CrossFit games. And I'll tell you what really solidified for me. I was remembering when you and I were uh, on the sidelines and you were wearing those really dumb shoes and- uh, <laughs> They're the best shoes. I they love were, my wedges. Yeah, they were okay. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, you know, like out of the shade. So my big bald head's getting sunburned. And I kind of turn and look to the crowd and it looked like a NASCAR rally, which again, oh. there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure NASCAR is a great sport. Like I don't like it, but okay. You know, but I look in the crowd and everybody looks like me. And that's what I remember the CrossFit games. And there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. But, you know, like I'm, I'm thinking of the health of the sport which is not the athletes, it's the fans. Like anybody can 
you know, you sign up for the open and you qualify, you can go. It doesn't matter who you are. Right. But sure. from a fan standpoint, like if you want to build a brand, you know, this country is getting more diverse, not less diverse. And you got to have outreach, you know, to continue to grow your brand like it's used to. And so that's why I posted it, and, you know, just thinking, hey, I'll spark some conversation, you know, it'll be some mm -hmm. fun. We'll talk about it. No one, you know, people will be on my side. They were not on my side. I'd like to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> but all that to say that we have sort of been fostering this diversity conversation and the race conversations, both on the podcast and within the CrossFit community and in the, you know, greater context of our country right now for a little bit, a little yeah. bit, a couple of weeks. Well, and then, you know, obviously, you know, kind of coming out of the the pandemic, or at least it feels like we are in some parts of the country. And then, you know, you've got this tragic murder mm -hmm. uh, in Minneapolis and, and then we start having protests and, you know, some of those unfortunately turned into riots. Like we had a lot of riots here in Cleveland and, you know, people were really on edge and then damn it, nobody took Greg's phone away. Right. Right. And it, and it, got, it got ugly fast. Yeah. That's the price of a, a bad tweet. Yeah, well, it's more than the tweet, but yeah, you're right. Like That's how it started. Yeah, well, no, yeah. I guess the affiliate letter was first. So let's go back. So if, yep. you're, if, you, ha if you don't know the, the chain of events or if this is your first time listening to us, hi, welcome. Sorry, you came when the house was on fire, but um, it's worth talking about. So uh, the first thing that I saw was the letter that one affiliate owner wrote to what looked like the entire sort of C-suite of CrossFit, um, voicing concerns about CrossFit had yet to say really anything about the protests and the movement. And, you know, they didn't say we stand in support of diversity, all Black Lives Matter. They didn't say anything one way or another. And people were sort of taking that silence as a stance. So what I read was this, this letter that was sent to CrossFit from a longtime affiliate who had a, a long standing relationship with all of those people voicing these concerns. And, and it was very well written, I thought, and it was like written with love, which I appreciated. Like she kind of was like, Hey, this is how I'm feeling. And you know, it's not okay that you're not standing up, but like, I'm coming at you from a place of love because I want you to do better and I want to do better. And I want the community to do better. Well, it's worth noting that it, this wasn't her first interaction with Greg. Like they've had a very good relationship. Right? Long standing yeah. relationship in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. And, and it was interesting. I mean, I don't know I don't, it brought up a lot of different points. It was long and thought out and well-written. And the response from it was, uh, I saw a screenshot and an email back where he kind of just kind of tore her apart a little bit. He shredded her. Yeah. Like, and yeah. for anyone that knows Greg, like, it's funny. I, you know, I, again, I kind of start thinking back on interactions and like full disclosure, I know Greg, I've met him, I've been to his house for dinner. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I know him well enough. If you saw me, he'd call me by name. Uh, you know, we're not, BFFs. I don't, you know, I don't text Not like them. us. Yeah. Not like us. Good but, Lord. <laughs> but, I, but I've met him, you know, and I've interviewed him. He was our first guest on the podcast prior Great. to you joining, or it would have been a much better interview. No offense, Chad. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, what, you know, what's interesting to me is like, I'm thinking back to that first interview with him and I was teasing him because leading in that interview, I was doing research on him and I went through his Twitter feed and found all these tweets that he had aimed at like CEOs of Coke and Pepsi mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. lawyers and he's calling them ass hats and dumb yep. asses and, and literally, you know, some of the worst language ever. And it was funny to me because none of it was uh, racially charged. It was just right. like very foul mouth and he was pissed off clearly. And I said to him at the time, I'm like, please don't ever close your Twitter handle. Right. You're really funny when you do this. And now I feel really responsible for not telling him to close his Twitter. No, hand. no, no, I wouldn't. And, and it's funny that you say that because I said that to someone uh, I was talking to about this earlier today as well. So he's, you know, he's, he tears her apart in this letter and he's like very straightforward and very brash. And that also happened in the next tweet that we'll talk about. I guess we haven't even gotten past the first step in the sequence of events that happened. But I will say that in the past, Greg has always been uh, brash and, and harsh and real and honest, brutally honest. And in the past, I think we've all sort of found that kind of endearing because he used it to do a lot of good. He used it to like call out Big Soda for what they were doing. He used it to call out the government for funding sugar and, and you know, uh, uh, what am I saying? Studies for being funded or backed by coca-cola things like that you know and he's had tweets that basically said and i'm paraphrasing but basically said like hey guess what you went out and bought yourself diabetes and that's really harsh 
But like, there have been plenty of people, myself included in the past that have laughed and have been like, oh, that's really harsh, but also true. And kind of, I'm glad someone said it out loud, you know, but again, I've never seen it be, like you said, never seen it be racially charged before and never seen it be this level of offensive, well, I guess. It, it's fair to note in the email to her, he was not racially charged. He correct, was just correct. highly, highly mean. And <laughs> like, I, I bring it up sort of as just the first sequence or the first event in a series of events that sort of put him in a bad light directly related to the issues that were going on in the country related to the greater issue of race. Yeah, we, I mean, we're not going to read her her blog post or the message from him, but if anybody wants to read it, it was Rocket CrossFit was mm-hmm. the gem. And so it's really easy to find. Just go to Morning Chalk Up or Google it or whatever. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll easily find it. You know, I, I honestly didn't share it. Her, what was interesting about her post on it, like I thought she had a really thoughtful post. Some of it was not factual for the record. Um, what? Well, so she referenced in there this kind of this ongoing, um, behavior by CrossFit and she references a post by a fellow meme page, Fluffy Duck, Mm -hmm. and references as he works for CrossFit and it was a racist post. And we can argue the racist part of it. I don't think it was, but I'll let people decide what's racist and what isn't. It's not my place to tell them, Uh, but he doesn't work for CrossFit. He's a meme page. I see what you're saying. He's he's a meme page just like me. Like there were, there were parts of it that were not super accurate. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I get it. Like, Trust me, I post stuff all the time where I look back and go, oh, that wasn't accurate. I got to go back and edit, you know, like people, especially, you know, when you're typing, probably annoyed, which I would be if I had, you know, I, I don't even know if she was annoyed, but I would have been if I'd gotten that letter from Greg, uh, no yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. But I, think, but I do think her, her post was thoughtful. So everybody should go back and read it for more context. Yeah. I think all that to say that when I was, I was, I would have been shocked if I were her that I had put that kind of time and energy into something to send, you know, eloquently and well thought out. And even if the person on the other end hated me and thought I was stupid and disagreed that I would get sort of like not a well thought out answer. That's all. Yeah. I want to be also careful to note. I had, I had posted the other day that anyone that knows Greg knows this is type of behavior. And somebody came into the comments was like, oh, you can't get away with saying it's just Greg being Greg. I don't- uh, No, that's not, not what you were saying. Well, I don't think either of us are saying that. I think yeah. you know, we're acknowledging you know, Greg's behavior is boorish, and, and, but he's done it for a long time. And it usually, almost always has been done on the side of good. Right, <laughs> like, that's, in, what, that's what I'm saying, exactly. Yeah. Like in the past, the, those kinds of comments have been like endearing, like, yeah, we're really fighting for this and we're calling out soda and calling it like it is. And um, it's never been like this before. And obviously this is not okay. Yeah. Uh, so what was next? What happened after that? Was it the, so the next, I think is the tweet. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, that was the next thing that came out probably from a sequence. It wasn't the very next thing, but it was the next thing that everybody saw for sure. Yeah. And the tweets rough. Yeah. Just it's like very insensitive and, you know, kind of stepping on both, in my opinion, both the pandemic and the issues surrounding the pandemic, as well as the death of George Floyd. And I think the tweet is what set off the masses. What's interesting to me about the tweet, um, again, I'm never going to tell somebody what it, you know, it's, it's sometimes easy to see what's racist. Like the, something's like black and white. There mm-hmm. are times where you can look at something and there are kind of two, two differing viewpoints in this case. Like I've heard a lot of people call that one racist. I've heard a lot of people say it wasn't, it was just, insensitive and, sure. and you, you maybe could argue both i don't know i i would say in this climate taking the name of someone who was just murdered by the cops and co-opting it into a, z- a disease is a pretty horrific tweet call it racial or not is horrific right um and i can certainly see why everyone was unbelievably upset about it um, right And I think that that is really, so if you're, you know, in the series of events with us, it's like we've been sort of, the world has been talking about these racial issues and how they're finally coming to the forefront. And, you know, we're we're doing things to spark real change in our communities, within the CrossFit community, thanks to discussions like, you know, the ones that came out of your post, John, and and people we've had on the show recently, like Easy Muhammad and, and Marquand Jones. And, you know, then this letter from Greg comes to this affiliate and we're like, ooh, that, that's bad. That's not really how you want to address anyone ever, but also especially not within this time on these topics. And then this tweet bomb sort of happens. And I, it felt to me like the final straw before what has happened, which is we have seen a ton of 
affiliates and well-known CrossFit athletes starting to pull away from CrossFit HQ. Yeah, the, well, and it's it's important to note too, like at some point in between all this, Greg has been doing Zoom calls with a lot of affiliates. So he's had access to a lot of mm. affiliate owners and they've all had different experiences with them. One of which came out was that Medium article where he was talking to an affiliate owner and, and was trying to make a point. I think even the owner said this, he was trying to make his point um, about what he cared about and kept saying, I don't care about Mr. Floyd which came off again as you know, incredibly insensitive. It, it appeared, at least from reading it, that Greg was trying to make a point of, hey, I care about this, not that, without connecting the dots of like, the whole world cares about this right now, buddy. Like, right. maybe you need to rein in your health initiative and have a little sympathy and empathy and care about us. And figure you know? out how not to be callous about this very real situation. I'm going to put you on the spot with a question. For, Please. First, I will say to everyone, Nikki and I don't ever plan this shit. If you guys, no. first time listening, like <laughs> we just kind of roll with it. So this is just kind of an honest on the spot. Yeah. How much of this do you think is the affiliate owners looking up and going, all right, we're just sick of this borscht behavior. It's time to go. And how mm -hmm. much of it is we're sick of this borscht behavior and we've been shut down for 60 days. We've now yeah. reassessed what CrossFit is actually worth to us and we're not sure it's worth the money anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and to add a, another third layer to that, how many of this is maybe gyms that were sort of like looking for a way out or weren't sure about their future from the get go. And, you know, this is another way to sort of address that, which is something that we talked about even when we were talking about reopening from COVID alone. Um, I don't know. I think that to full disclosure, like I think this podcast tonight is going to be a lot more of us asking questions than really having answers or opinions that are like really full fledged because it's still happening. You know, every five minutes I check my phone and someone else has said something or someone else has deaffiliated or CrossFit's come out with some new statement. I mean, it's still kind of like happening. We're in the midst of the, we're in the eye of the storm, if you will. Um, but to answer your question, I actually think that Right before this happened, gyms, especially in areas that were starting to reopen, that were starting to see phase ones, gyms had been really working hard to figure out how to stay afloat. They had been, you know, gym owners have been pouring their hearts and souls into equipment rentals and Zoom classes and trying to figure out how to make it work if they were the type of affiliate that wanted to sort of like come through and figure it out and, and get to the end of this. So in my mind, for this to happen now, when we're, we're starting to see those gyms finally come back to a point where they're getting people in their doors, maybe it's only one at a time, or maybe they're doing one-on-one -on -one training or everyone's in masks. I don't know. It's different all over the country. But you know, now that we're really getting back into the swing of things for people to make a decision on affiliate or de-affiliate or you know, take a stand, worry about keeping members, worry about losing members, worry about my visibility as a gym. You know, if I want to keep my affiliation, but everyone else is deaffiliating. Is someone going to judge me and my gym? I mean, that's just a lot of pressure on them. So I would say my, my best guess is that for the people who are seeing this now and saying, I want to get out, it's kind of like, I'm done with this behavior. I cannot be associated with this. And for those reasons, I'm out. Well, so let's, let's explore that for a minute. Cause there's mm -hmm. two, there's two viewpoints. I think people, you know, everyone keeps asking me what's next, what's next. I'm like, Oh, I'll I know I do memes. Don't ask yeah. me. <laughs> too i'm like oh geez yeah. i don't know <laughs> i don't well, want but, to affiliate. <laughs> but there are there are two scenarios that people need to think about so if you unaffiliate is that what we're saying or is it deaffiliate is it unaffiliate i think it's i've been saying unaffiliate which is probably stupid but i think it's d if you remove your affiliation <laughs> yes if they are no longer affiliated they are no longer affiliated that's let's, good we're safe that, that way if they are no longer affiliated Here's the real question. How do people find them? That's what mm -hmm. they have. That's what those gyms have to worry about because you're now right. no longer part of the database. And right. for everyone listening, quit sending me new databases, by the way. Like I've gotten a dozen <laughs> already of people going, hey, here's all the gyms that left. I'm like, we're two days into this. Shut up. Right. Um, but like, you know, in the future, assuming they stay, you know, not affiliated, how would people find them? and know what their methodology is. Right, exactly. So I see it a couple different ways. Like for the gyms that were like, hell no, I see what's happening at HQ. They're not getting my support. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to support their name. I don't want to give them any more money. Like I totally understand that. Like good on you for being like, we're out. 
for the gyms that haven't made a decision yet because they're trying to weigh their options, you're exactly right. I mean, how many of their members walked through their doors for the very first time because they Googled CrossFit plus my town, you know what I mean? And, and found the gym and, and heard of the methodology or just saw like Carrie Pierce's abs and they were like, oh, I want that. So I guess I'll do CrossFit like that. That is very real. And for those people who are just now starting or just coming out of quarantine, you know, looking for a fitness program, especially they don't know who Greg Glassman is. And this may not affect them the way it affects us because we're already in the community and because we already know those things. So I feel for affiliates who need to make a decision that, you know, not on one hand is very moral and on the other hand is very practical. And I see, I see arguments for both sides. That is to say now, are we going to do this thing where like gyms judge each other, the ones who have stayed and the ones who have left? I hope not. And, oh, wait, wait, one more thing. Sorry, just to complicate things even more, the ones who have already left, I feel like, are the ones who are doing the work to put pressure on CrossFit as an organization to respond. It's like, we need them. We yes. need those people to like take a stand. And it's hard because I, I cannot say like, are everyone take a stand or like, don't, I don't know. I don't well, look, know. I, think, I think it's fair to say that, uh, you know, probably the bulk of those that have said they're no longer going to be affiliated are hoping that them leaving will fix the problem and they can come back into the fold. It would be crazy to not think that's true. That's but what I, I hope. But I could be wrong. Um, we'll get into hopes and dreams at the end of once we yeah. analyze all these things. <laughs> I worry about, so the, the gyms that stay though, like I worry about the impact on their members, on mm -hmm. their, you know, how they feel about themselves. Um, and I, I have so many differing feelings about it. Like I, I've said for a long time, a really long time, that if we purchase things based off the morals of the people that led those companies, we'd all have to build gardens in our backyard and start making our own clothes. Mm. Because if you, if you really look at, at how things are made, I mean, for years, and I can't speak to Apple now, but for years, like, you know, they were notorious for having their stuff built under horrible conditions, mm. you know? And so you just think about, and you know, a lot of people didn't blink at that. They kept buying iPhones. I got an iPhone. Like you too. You know, so you, you know, it's where you really have to break it down. Is like, what are you paying for? Are you paying for the methodology and to be a part of that local community, or are you paying for the morals of the person running the company? It's a hard decision for a lot of people. And I'm not not saying by no means am I saying that you're justifying racist comments or racism or standing up for that or supporting it. I'm saying if you look at this, every company you do deal with, like, I don't know, it's a, it's a very complex thing to think about. Um, I appreciate the, the gyms that have walked away. Cause I think, yeah, I do too. And I the athletes, the athletes, especially. Because, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, talk about a hard decision. Like somebody asked me about that, the athletes, they said, you know, do you think more athletes will, will? Uh, you know, I'm like, well, I'd like to see the top ones go first. Because it's really, will. it's going to be really, really hard for the, the low level ones. So like, well, why wouldn't they? I'm like, I don't know. Would you go to your boss and tell him he's a racist pig and quit on the spot without another job in hand? Like, that's what, what you're talking about. You well, you know, job, this is their lives. I get, that's my point though. It's like, it's still their job, you know, yeah. like they still have sponsors, everything else. Like they're all trying to see how it plays out. Right. Again, not justifying it. It's just so, so complex for people to think about like, how am I going to pay my next mortgage? Mm -hmm. you know, like that's what I'm talking. This is like real life people, you know, these guys don't make hundreds of thousands of no. dollars. They make tens of dollars Yeah, in a lot of cases. Well, first of all, and now I feel like a horrible person just for having an iPhone. You're welcome. You're <laughs> oh, welcome. God. And like, you know, I don't, I don't know where my Lululemon pants are made. So, you know, um, I think that you do, you do raise a much larger morale question that I'm like ill-equipped to answer because clearly I'm, a product of pop culture and the things I'm supposed to buy, I buy. And me too. I'm uh, yeah. equipped to answer it. Like yeah. Um. But but I do think that that publicly, you, like you, like we said in the very beginning, like this sequence of events that sort of like started with not taking a stand when when everyone else has been and and should be because it's the right thing to do because silence is taking a stand and then like snowballing that into these insensitive comments and then 
also not immediately issuing an apology or an apology that some people don't think is very genuine or isn't good enough or whatever you want to say. There's a million opinions on that as well. Like all of that is snowballing into the kind of situation where I fully understand people being like, I don't want to support this. I can't. I understand it. It's it's very topical. It's at the forefront of real change that's happening. Like real, we're actually doing it. We can we really have a shot at affecting change for the good here. Um, and and this is the kind of thing that people right now, especially, are like, I can't, I can't handle it. I can't support it. I can't do it. I get that. Um, I just, you know, I just, I don't even know what, what was the topic. Well, but I, to, to your point, we are affecting real change. Here's the change I want to see come from this. Yeah. Like, I love the fact that the affiliates are standing up and going, we're not going to stand for racist behavior. And, and I think that's the right and moral stance to take. And same for the athletes. I also think that's the easy stance to take. Explain. Easy by the fact that if you don't stand up and go, I abhor racism, there's only one other option to go there. You, <laughs> right. you Very support true. racism, right? Very true. It's, it's an easy stance. Like, you would think everyone abhors racism. You would think. I know they all don't, but it's an easy stance to take. It's a okay. harder stance to talk about race. Yeah, I mean, feel about how uncomfortable you and I are right now talking sure. about the intricacies of Apple and these athletes don't make a lot of money. Should they leave immediately or do they go get a job before they do it? Like, right. Talking about race, particularly when you're non-diverse like myself, I'm a 49-year-old bald white guy. I'm the one demographic everybody can make fun of. Feel free to roast me. <laughs> you know, what yeah. I want is people to be able to talk about race without fear as long as they have a heart of, I want to learn. I want yes. to understand you. I want to understand your cause. I mean, I'll be honest with everyone listening. Like, I never really got Black Lives Matter. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't offended by it or disturbed by it. I just never got it mm-hmm. until recently. Okay. And now I get it. Like, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm really starting to understand, like, we're fighting to, be, to matter. Like, you, you just say that aloud, you're like, holy crap. Like, we just no. want to be heard and we're not even being heard. We just and, want to not die. And, yeah. And it's heartbreaking. And so now yes. I get it. Like, I wish I'd gotten it 10 years ago. Right. Which is, I get it now. Like, it's okay to apologize, move on, move forward and help. And I think right. there's a lot of people that aren't willing to say I was wrong or I've been on the sidelines too long. Mm-hmm. I think it's time for people to do that. And, and specifically for CrossFit, that's what I want is the affiliates to go, we're not racist for having a bunch of white guys in here, but maybe we should talk about why that is. It isn't that we're jerks or that we've even advertised white guys only. It just turned out that way. Right. You know? right. And you, you're never going to convince me that African-Americans and Asians and, and whoever don't like to be athletic. You know, and human. You know, yeah, they don't like to, what you're telling me. They don't like to be in shape. They don't like to have abs. Like who doesn't like to have abs? Come on. Right. Everybody likes to have right. abs. Right. Well, and to your point, like your growth and the things that you've learned and the things that you're understanding now, that's happening to a lot of people at the, you know, we're at the forefront of this conversation finally after what feels like a million years. And I think that's why particularly things are sort of like burning to the ground the way that they are, because people are aware and they're ready. They're ready to affect this change and they don't feel like they can stand behind, you know, an, an organization with someone at the helm who's making these kinds of comments to your point about the athletes who are, so we've seen a number of athletes, uh, games athletes who have said, Unless something changes, they are not going to or not planning on going to compete at the CrossFit Games. And we don't know what is happening with games at this point. I mean, we were saying weeks ago that we were still waiting for like COVID regulations to determine whether or not it could even happen. And that was never settled upon. So there's plenty going on in the world of the global pandemic that makes games sort of like up in the air. But we do know who was invited based on what terms and some of those really big name athletes like Noah Olson and Chandler Smith and Travis Mayer have already said like, unless something changes as of right now, like I'm not the kind of athlete or person who's going to stand behind this and go compete at the CrossFit Games. And I think that is so indicative of, you know, sort of like leadership and and what's flowing down the pipeline and how athletes are going to start evaluating the situation for themselves on every level, on the elite level and on the not so elite level, the regular people level, if you will. I think that's that's going to play a part in this moving forward. Well, I've been watching the leaderboard as these guys drop out thinking I might have a shot. There you go. Maybe. (laughs) 
I finished pretty high in my age division. I mean, you never know. 2020. Yes. <laughs> Me and you Matt. Know. Me and Matt. It's going to be great. It's crazy. And I suspect that even by the time we publish this, more, more athletes will say something. So I think looking ahead, I mean, it is murky. I have no idea what the clear path forward is. But for these elite athletes where this is their livelihood, this is their jobs, that they put food on their, on their table and feed their family, I think that they will still have a career in competitive functional fitness. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I would venture a guess that even if CrossFit just dissolves and we stop using that word, word rather altogether, you know, that Loudon Lives events will still continue in some capacity that, um, I mean, look, the Dubai CrossFit Championship, DCC, has only been DCC for two years and they've been around for like seven or eight and they, they were Dubai Fitness Championship beforehand. So I feel like and I hope that there will still continue to be opportunities for these athletes to travel the world, to make money, to have fans. Like, I don't want to stop watching this. And I, I wish for CrossFit to somehow make it right and not go anywhere and we can save this thing because I love this thing. But I, I don't know if that's going to happen I do want these athletes to continue having these careers and continue being able to, you know, live their lives this way. Well, look, if there's one, I'm gonna give some dad advice. You love oh, here we go. Dad advice. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Everybody loves the dad advice from the old Let guy. Let me get my sticky notes. You better. Uh, there's no chance that there won't be some sort of competition because you can't have this much money at stake mm. without somebody filling the void. Someone okay. will, there will be a games. It may not say CrossFit games but there will be an identical competition with identical programming and all the same athletes in some form. Now it might not happen in 2020, but mm -hmm. there's no way it passes in 2021. No way. I don't know who will do it. Could be live and loud. Could be DCC. Could, could be, be rogue. The, could be the make watch great again. Classic. I don't Ooh. know. I don't know. Could be any of that, <laughs> but there's no chance that this much money's at stake and no one fills that void. I mean, come on, it's America, man. Like, it's capitalism at its finest. Somebody's going to fill that void. Well, Rogue uh, has already said that, you know, although they don't stand behind what's going on right now, that they will continue to fulfill their requirements to CrossFit the way that has been laid out so far for this year. So, again, we have no idea what, what the game's situation could or would look like, especially now. But, you know, I would I would tap them probably to be at the top of the list of organizations or folks that continues some sort of competition semblance moving forward. One thing I will be interested to see come down because we kind of failed to talk about this at the top, but it's relevant to this topic uh, at kind of at the beginning of all this unrelated to Greg, but certainly part of the racial conversation was a uh, team misfit group oh, that's text. Right. Sorry. I that, forgot yeah, about that. Yeah. That Jessica Griffith, Chandler Smith, um, trap. Uh, what's the name? Uh, Travis Tra Williams. Yes, Travis Williams uh, and a few other athletes were all a part of. And in this conversation, Jessica uses the N word, and and everyone defends her, and Chandler calls them out. Mm -hmm. And it's a big mess, uh, clearly, and a horrible moment for Chandler. Who, by the way, all these athletes have been on the show, and I full disclosure, like Chandler is a dear friend of both of ours. Like, mm -hmm. love him dearly. Like, the, probably the nicest man. I've ever met. Yeah, he's great. It, this is a really great dude. And so I even, like, I messaged him on that day and said, what do you want from me, dude? What can I do to help yeah, you? Yeah, I did you know? too. And in true Chandler fashion, he's like, I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. Right. And, you know, like he didn't want anything to happen to them and it leaked. And then, you know, obviously the, the outroars there should be that came from it. Uh, my point to all this is, you know, the CrossFit Games weighed in and said, you know, we're going to get back to everyone and what's going to happen. So my question for you is, are they going to get banned like a drug ban, like four years, two years, oh, or permanent? That is a good question because they were, as a result of that text chain, um, they were dropped from Misfit, Misfit Athletics um, and probably a few of their other um, sponsorships, if I had to guess. And I think Jess is off Instagram now. I haven't even seen her around. Yep. But... Uh, that is a really good question. I don't know. I feel like they, I feel like maybe to, to go along with, well, I don't know. 
There's got to be a I don't code have an answer con- for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, look, there has to be a code of conduct that the athletes uh-huh. are part, part of the athlete agreement. So I, yes. I'm certainly sure it would be part of the conversation of, hey, should we ban these athletes for two years, four years? No, I mean, it'd be no different than NFL, NBA. Like when these things happen, you get suspensions. Yes, like the, totally. The kid that uh, plays football for the Browns here ripped the guy's helmet off and hit him with it. Like he got a six game suspension for that. So it would make sense for something like this that you would give them a suspension You're of right. some sort. You're um, totally right. You know, I, I will say in, in all of it, you know, and everyone can go back. I'm not going to give everybody the links, but you can find it. It's all out of morning chalk up and everything else. Um, you know, I think the biggest hubbub on Travis's end is that he was defending Jess's use of the word. And, um, you know, it sounds like Misfit, you know, did the right thing and stepped in and, and you know, fired them both. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just not okay. It's just not okay to use that language and especially when confronted with use of that language you know if someone if someone calls you out like it's 2020 like you can't and you never should have but i'm saying at least these issues are at the forefront of everyone's minds and like like you said like we can have uncomfortable conversations and people need to learn how to apologize. And I know I'm going to get so many haters for being like, everyone's too sensitive and cancel culture 2020. And none of that pertains to racism and racial slurs. Well, none of that. There are some words that are so hateful. Yes. And, and viewed as so, like I always had my daughters, I'm, I feel like I'm always giving them life lessons and sometimes they're just funny and, and, you know, like passing. And we were watching some show last night and this was part of the topic. And I turned to my girls, I'm like, hey, pop quiz, when can you say the N-word? And they both go, when? And I'm like, absolutely never. Literally never. Yeah, I'm like, you guys are never allowed to. Of course Like, not. it's just like, it's, it doesn't matter who even says you can. You never get a pass for that, I'm sorry. Like, this, is, this word is hateful. It is the meanest word on the planet and, right. and words do matter, you know? Yes. And, and so I think that was the part that was so disappointing from all of that. And, and big props to Chandler, man. Not surprising, but man, what a gentleman. He's I just mean, a class act yeah. through and through. And, and so sort of it, it continues on into the, what we're seeing right now, which is these athletes who are being very vocal about, you know, either not standing behind the current views of the CrossFit CEO and or not standing with the organization until they see some kind of change. And sort of like the affiliates, like, you know, almost everyone has come out now and said, we don't believe in this. You know, this man does not speak for us. We do fitness. We're boots on the ground. We're helping change lives. And what he says at the top does not directly reflect us in any way, shape or form. Everyone has said that, but only a handful of gyms have decided to de-affiliate, remove their affiliation from here on, from here on out. Same with the athletes. I don't really blame any of them for saying one way or another, whether or not they're in or out, you know, the fact that they're coming out and speaking their truth and taking a stand and being leaders, being leaders and allowing their fans and, and, you know, people who look up to them and respect them and emulate them to say, okay, those people, they do not stand for racism and I'm not going to either. I think that's really important. Let me ask you, um, we're going to open, open a lot of can of worms here and ask a lot of Go questions, ahead. but it was just on my mind from this because somebody messaged me. I got this message uh, the day after the Jess and Chandler thing broke. And I want you to keep in mind, Travis didn't actually use the word. He defended the use of the word, which is bad, but he didn't use it. Um, mm-hmm. But he was defending it. So I'm not defending him. I just want to put some context to it. And I hadn't really given any thought to you know this page or like my relationship with him. I know him. I've talked to him several times. I wouldn't describe us as friends, but we're certainly friendly and I could text him at any point and talk to him, you know? Um, So I got, I woke up the following morning with a DM from a follower who said to me, I'm extremely disappointed in you that you're still following Travis Williams. Oh, that's how I started my day. It was not a good way to start the day. Mm -hmm. Like, well, thanks for making me feel like a big pile of shit. I appreciate it. Um, And so I guess that's really the question. Like, do you immediately follow unfollow someone? I'm legit asking like for myself, yeah. like do you immediately unfollow someone that you've known for a while and you've never had an interaction with them or even witnessed or seen something, but now you've heard from others that they've done this. Like, I just think of all the shitty things I've done in life. Sure. I'd have sure. no follow. I'd have no followers if everybody knew everything I've done. Like I uh, think to answer your question, like, I think that you do, if you don't want, if you want to disassociate with that person, you know, not stand for what they, 
what they believe in or what they say or not support them because you have a different opinion or belief. But I also think that, you know, Travis apologized and whether you take that to heart or believe it or whatever, I mean, it's so hard because you can't say anything right anymore. Like even if he apologizes, there's a million people that are like, nope, you're all set. Like there's no redeeming here. There's no a redemption or anything. So I, I don't know. I think you know, my instinct is like, yeah, if you don't want to associate with that person anymore, you unfollow them. And then, you know, if they issue an apology or if they look like they're growing or learning and you want to give them another chance, then you give them another chance. It's just, it's just such weird. a tough it's thing. Just like, weird. It's weird. That's like something we have to talk about now. Oh, and I unfollowed like, him. I unfollowed him. I, you know, and I mean, I'd say that like, and I felt like a a shitty person for doing it truthfully for like being bullied into it but mm. I, I did it for the perception because i didn't want anybody else to come in and like start grilling me on it and me have to explain myself like there's just i get too many dms to have to start typing paragraphs to people i don't even know you know people don't realize um, you guys john reads all of your uh, messages and, and i stress all out of your comments and all of your everything like he's not some like meme lord who sits high up on a chair and gets like a bazillion dms and just lets them like rain over him he reads it's, every single one it stresses me out so I bad know. and I that one stressed me out you know you're like you're so funny and you're such a voice and you have such a like make wads great again has such a voice on social media that I think people forget that you're, or maybe they just don't know that like, like I don't even want to be like a, the internet troll, but you're like the nicest guy ever. Well, <laughs> like people don't realize that. Well, I, I guess I just wanted to say that I unfollowed him, but I did not unfollow him with my heart for whatever that's Aww. worth. I guess, you know, I've had good. No, that's a good question. You have to think about these things now. I guess my point is if Travis reached out to me and said, Hey, can I come on the show? I'd have him on and let him tell his side. And if he messaged and said, Hey, you know, would you mind sending my mom a happy birthday? I do that too, because mm. I don't, I don't hate the guy. You know, I, he did, yeah. he did something I don't agree with. And you know what? There's a lot of people who do a lot of things I don't agree with. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things I do that people wouldn't agree with. Like, see, I would be hesitant if he reached out and said, I want to, I want to be on the show and I want to give my opinion. I would be hesitant because I, like, yes, we can have differences of opinion and like, I like Coke and you like Pepsi, but like, no, I don't think I can have a difference in opinion uh, from you on whether or not use of the N word is okay. Well, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't have him on and let him say that I'd grill him. I mean, bluntly, like I've been messaging Glassman's team begging him to come on. Like if he comes on the show, I can promise you it will not be a softball pitch question. Mm -hmm. Let him just say whatever the hell he wants. We're going to grill the hell out of him. Yeah. I don't think he's coming on. So probably not. But also let me just say real quick in Travis's defense, probably now that he's issued an apology, I would have him on to talk more about the learning rather than the like, I don't know. Everyone's pissed at me. Kind I'll of tell you, I'll tell you what I'll give him props for out of all of this. And again, like his defense of it was really shitty and particularly as much, <laughs> as much as I, as much as I love Chandler, that what makes it even more shitty to me. Like when Chandler goes, Hey, this is not cool, bro. He should have said, you know what, Chandler, you're such a you're straight right. up dude. You're, you're right. right. I'm sorry. I offended you. Like if, tra- if Chandler ever called me and said, Hey John, I was offended by this post. I would delete it so fast. Right. It would spin your head because I love that dude. You mm-hmm. know, that's what I don't get. But to Travis's credit, he went on and did an apology and then he left the comments open. And if you want to grab some popcorn and have some fun, <laughs> go sit and look at that post for a while because the comments are brutal. And he took the beating, you know, and, and bluntly, like, I'm not sure, you know, I probably would have done like Jess, deleted my Instagram mm-hmm. and just been, I'm out. See you Leave later. Well. You know, and, well. just sort of for the record, like hats off to Misfit Athletics for handling this situation with such grace um, and for taking a stand very quickly, um, you know, telling everyone what they do and do not stand for, not being okay with the situation happening amongst their athletes. Like just, those are really, really good guys through and through. Um, And I, I appreciate how they handled it. This was tough. Yeah, I think that, look, this entire situation from end to end, I think is is tough for all of us. Again, like, again, we have a diversity problem. And that's why it's tough, because a lot of us don't understand, myself included. I'm sure we've said some stuff on here tonight that people are going to raise an eyebrow to. And I'm, I'm, happy sure. to, I'm happy to receive the DMs or the messages and address those and talk about it. I think that's sure. the point of a, a race conversation. Like, it's, you know, I have the same conversation with the LGBT community. Like, Will and I had Will on, mm-hmm. and at some point in that conversation... 
uh, I refer to transgender athletes as transgenders. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-uh. Not like, okay. You, 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 that's not how we refer to transgender athletes. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I don't know. So explain it to Tell me, me. <laughs> you yeah. know? And he did, you know, and, and now I know, like, yeah. you know, and, and I'm not offended and he wasn't offended. He knew I'm just a dumbass. Like that works out <laughs> for both of us, you know? Totally. And, you know, mm, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think that's the point is that, you know, I just want us to talk and, and with a spirit of learning and understanding and, and realizing we're going to get offended some and we're going to offend mm-hmm. others some. And, but realize that we are each other's advocate. And then the day we should be loving each other and coming to a resolution and moving forward. And if we can do that, I think CrossFit survives this. I think the yes. game survives this. I think yes. athletes move back into place and we all go back to complaining about the assault bike. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's amazing. That would be yeah. ideal. You know, going back to sort of like, what does the future look like and what happens now moving forward? I think there are a lot of questions about how does CrossFit, like you said, survive this? What what do they have to do as an organization to make people want to stay or make people okay with what has happened over the course of the weekend? And, you know, I'm not sure if it's an official apology in a way that hasn't happened because he did issue, Greg did issue some kind of apology, but like people were complaining it wasn't super genuine or they were complaining it wasn't coming from his page. It came from CrossFit. I'm I'm not really sure, but that doesn't seem to be enough at this point. So like what else needs to happen? I know a lot of people are asking like, will he resign or step down? Will someone else come in and take his place? Like what, what will ensure the future of CrossFit as a brand so that we feel like we can back it? I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but if for whatever reason that doesn't happen and CrossFit just kind of like (laughs) dissolves or goes away or everybody leaves so fast that there's nothing left. Another question I have is, you know, we talked about sort of like, what do affiliates do if no one knows that they're a CrossFit gym or no one knows their methodology? Like they just say that they're functional fitness gyms and hope people find them. I don't know. But on the other, on the other side, what happens to all of the coaches like me? I have a CrossFit level two certification. If CrossFit's no longer a thing, what does my cert mean? What it means what can it's I worth do? nothing. I'll give you a nickel for it. That's what it's there worth. There you go. There you go. And, and for me, it matters less because I coach as a hobby and, and have my whole coaching career. But for the full-time coaches or for people who really wanted to own CrossFit gyms and for the people that rely on this, again, to put food on the table and feed their family, like, what does that mean for them? What do they do if this isn't a thing anymore. I think it will be a thing, Nikki. I, I mean, I straight I up messaged some of Glassman's people today and gave them suggestions to what you're talking about. What I'd like <gasps> what to What are your suggestions? Oh, I have so many. Uh, the biggest one was <laughs> all these, all these affiliates that have said they're leaving, take their affiliate fees, donate it to Black Lives Matter. That's step one. And okay, that's, cool. that's millions of dollars, by the way, not hundreds of dollars. Um, The second thing I would do is I would start setting up an ongoing conversation with diverse leaders in the community. Like, and I don't mean like, all right, once a year, we're going to get everybody together. It's like, you got to have, you have to have representation. Like Like put together a board kind of? You got to have somebody in HQ. Like you have somebody in charge. Like you it can't just be Greg running the show anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, so maybe a board, you know, I don't know. Um, If he stayed in place and they did that, do you think that would be enough? No, I look, ultimately, I think what will probably have to happen, if it were me, I say he steps down, he's chairman emeritus, and he can run the health program and stay out of everybody's hair and and do what he loves. And we take his phone away. Um, (laughs) You you put somebody else in charge, you build a diversity committee. Who's um, in charge? That's I, my other question. I don't know. I, because I, I offered to take the job. Oh, you did. <laughs> I absolutely, I absolutely did. I've, I've offered twice now. Um, but you know, you put somebody else in charge that runs it. You separate the CrossFit Games, or you keep it in. It doesn't really matter. You just have to have somebody else run it, and then you have to have outreach. But the other thing I think has to happen is Greg has to get on the phone and start calling these affiliates one at a time. And at this point, four or 500. So he's going to be on the phone for a while, but he's got to start making some phone calls and making amends and apologizing. He's got to mean it. And otherwise they're not coming back. That's interesting. Like an apology isn't just doing a video apology and everybody looking at it and say, okay, the old white guy said, he's sorry. So he's sorry. Like you got to start putting, you know, real action behind your words. Not only have to apologize, but then you have to start making real outreach, whether that's building CrossFit gyms, 
in areas where you would help build up those communities or investing more money in some of the existing gyms you have or mm -hmm. waiving affiliate fees or giving free level ones and level twos to those gyms so they can add coaches mm -hmm. so they can start doing their own outreach. Like I can keep giving you a list of things they could do over and over and over. Like, yeah, you know, what we can't do is go back to the status quo. Agreed. A hundred percent. I wonder, like, I think a board would be ideal for representation. Like you said, I was thinking to myself, like who could even step into that role? And my first thought was Nicole Carroll, but then today we found out that Nicole Carroll put in for her resignation from HQ. So then I'm kind of like, geez, I don't know. I don't know who's in there. I'm not super familiar with what that, you know, that committee looks like now. Um, but I agree with you in that it cannot go back to the way that it was in one way, shape or form. My ideal, like if I could just, you know, have it be however I wanted it to be, um, you know, he would, like you said, he would step down or remove himself or whatever that is. And, and some kind of entity, a group of people who could represent us in a way that we felt right would resume control of CrossFit. And then the gyms that left and the athletes that left would come back. And then we can keep going as a family because I feel really strongly about, you know, some of those heritage gyms and big programs and big names. Like I want to do this with them alongside them because I believe in them. But my question for you is, even if that were to happen, like, will they come back or has the damage already been done? Uh, I think we're closer to the damage being done than not. And mm -hmm. I do think uh, there's w one aspect of this we haven't talked about uh, that connects to all of this. Greg has what I refer to as FU money, meaning he can say and do what he wants and there's nothing any of us can do. He has enough money to survive forever. That includes CrossFit, meaning he's got 15,000 affiliates or 13,000. So as of date, well, let's just, let's go to the extreme and say a thousand have left, okay. which is a big number. Yes. He's still got 12,000 affiliates, Nikki. That's a lot of money. CrossFit's not going out of business. He doesn't need any of these affiliates that left. So the option then is someone to your point, like a, a brilliant uh, coach and in person like Nicole Carroll or Rich or whoever creates their own brand, call it whatever, and brings all of these affiliates that left under the fold. We'll call it for the sake of this podcast, let's call it a union, right? Okay. And you take those four or 500 or 1,000 affiliates and now they all come together under a new name, whatever it may be, and we're back off to the races. Same mythology, just a different name. And so we all become functional fitnessers? Yeah, as maybe. As CrossFitters or whatever it is? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, we'll come up with a new name for it. Doesn't, you know, CrossFit's, you know, kind of a weird name anyway. So we'll, we'll come up with something. But I hear what you're saying in that, like, we're not going to stop doing the thing that we love and coaches are not going to stop helping people on a daily basis. And gym owners are not going to stop caring about their communities. Like all of that will live on. I just am like, I just am sad. I'm sad that we are divided and that people are going in different directions. And I am glad to affect change. Do not get me wrong. Like shit has got to get shaken up. Now is the time. And we cannot stand for racism and we cannot allow this shit to keep happening. Like we just can't, but I'm just, I'm just bummed that it, it comes in, you know, through this pathway of these racist or insensitive tweets. And now we're all like breaking off into different directions. And I just want to like pick up the pieces of these people that are getting spread apart and like, come back to me. Like I want to do it all together again. Yeah. I, 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 I wish think we could. What you have to think about here though, Nikki, is like if all these gems that are broken off now come back under one umbrella, think of there's so many companies this has happened to. Just look at the airlines. You think there's always, you know, two dozen airlines? No, they all broke off from each other. How about your phone service? You think, I don't know if you have Verizon, Sprint, AT&T or whatever, mm -hmm. like it used to just be Ma Bell. That was right. it. No, you're right, you're right. Right? You're right. Okay. And, you know, so my point is, is that, you know, a, a new company under a new name doing the exact same thing is no different than having Disneyland and Six Flags or whatever, you know, hmm. um, you know, same product, same methodology, different name. Right. And now you just have to decide, all right, you know, which one do I want to be with or which one is maybe most convenient to my home or whatever, you mm -hmm. know? Okay. Or, or do I want to, you know, work out out of Greg or not? Uh, you know, there's that also that option. So right. I'm not worried that 
all these affiliates that have decided to leave are going to be left in the cold and go out of business. I think that will resolve itself. I think the games will resolve itself because there's too much money. I'm with you though. I'm sad to see that it could potentially break apart. And that's yeah. what I hope they fix. Like, can let's fix the damage that was done, bring everybody back together and, yeah. and figure out a way to move forward. But if we can't, it's also not going to be the end of the world. No, you're right. You know? You're right. For sure. It's just like, it's the end of like our little world as we know it, our little like CrossFit microcosm um, in, in some very sad ways and in some very good ways. Like, you know, the fact that we're just bringing this to light and working together as a community to come up with something better that's better for all of us. That's really huge. Well, fingers crossed it, it gets resolved. I mean, there's nothing we can do today other than just <laughs> pray and hope. So a lot awesome. though it's a lot to take in we didn't resolve shit tonight i'd like to throw it out there nothing Not, nothing. nothing absolutely nothing <laughs> well i said going in it's like we're gonna have more questions and answers because it's all still happening right and like swear it's been what like an hour i'm gonna pick up my phone and have seventy-five thousand missed messages just you know people being like did you see this and this athlete said this and now this oh. gym is out and my anxiety is so high right now nikki <laughs> It is so high. Every time I open my phone, it still says 99 plus DMs. <laughs> no. Because it's so high, it can't count past 99. And oh I have no God. idea how many I have. And I, my anxiety can't handle it. It's driving me crazy. Hey, that reminds me. You know, we asked on social media if there were any topics or anything that people wanted us to cover. And yes. I got some really good questions. I mean, we, we have covered a lot of this already just in our chatter, if you can follow any of that. Um, but I did get a couple questions that I wanted to that I wanted to bring up. One was someone wrote, "I'd love to hear more about the logistics of actually removing an affiliation. What does that entail that members may not realize?" And from what I understand, I, I spoke to my gym owner about this today. From what I understand, CrossFit, when you affiliate with CrossFit, they really do not offer you anything other than the name. So if you're just a member at a gym and you're not really super aware into what's going on, nothing will really change for you other than the sign on the building and the name on the logo and the branding efforts around the gym. Um, as far as how you logistically remove an affiliation, CrossFit gyms pay an affiliation fee once a year that sets them up for the year. So I think a lot of them, if they're deciding to, you know, remove their affiliation, they'll edit their website, they'll change their logo, they'll change their branding, and then they'll technically still be affiliated for the remainder of that period that they have already paid for until the 12 months is up. So, you know, nothing, nothing really will change other than when it's time to renew, they probably won't renew. That's as, as I understand it, and it could be wrong. And maybe everyone's going for a class action lawsuit to redeem their funds and affiliation fees, but that's how I understand it works. Well, it's important to note that affiliation fee is really, really low. It's only three grand. And mm -hmm. like, it's one of the lowest costs of entry for any franchise on the planet. So, um, you know, it's, it's a low amount of money that they have to pay. So the odds of even, them even suing for that money back, if, you know, if they needed to, it would be pretty slim to say the least, but you do get the brand, which is the biggest part of it. And the CrossFit would tell you, you actually get the defense and support from, you know, the CrossFit legal team. If people get hurt or, you know, or if, you know, Coke comes after you or whoever, you know, they'll help defend you. And all of that is true, but the biggest piece you get is the CrossFit name. So when you go on Google and say CrossFit's near me, it tells you who they are. I'm looking for another question. Were there any that said, why is John so awesome? I'm sure there were hundreds. No, I mean, yes, all of them. Hundreds, all, all of them were that. that way. All of them were that way. Um, I, someone, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the only thing I would add to the, you know, the CrossFit name discussion, because I've talked to a couple of coaches about this recently, is that that's the big concern of the ones that haven't left, is that when people think of CrossFit, no one, you know, particularly like the new CrossFitters, even who Greg Glassman is. Right. You know, they just like people just Google CrossFit. And that's why some of them are struggling to leave because these smaller boxes that don't have a ton of members, it is a huge gamble Yeah. to, to get rid of the name because now people have to find you. And that's right. a really hard proposition. Right. So it actually leads perfectly into the next question. Someone wrote, I really want to know um, whether your home boxes are unaffiliating and where those athletes will migrate to if you end up losing them because of that. And that, you know, I was, like I said, I was just talking to my gym owner about this today and he, you know, is, has already renounced the, the comments from Greg has already explained that we don't stand behind that, but has also said, you know, Greg wasn't the one in class, like coaching you through your first snatch or, 
you know, letting you talk about your recent breakup or holding your baby so that you could do thrusters. Like that's us and we're not changing. That being said, you know, the new members we've gotten, especially out of quarantine, like you just said, have searched Google searched the word CrossFit and we came up and they came in and, and joined our family. So it's, he's not ready to make a decision until he sort of sees where the chips fall a little bit, a little bit further in. And I think that's fine. Like I said, at the very beginning, it's like, we needed those people, those affiliates that, that pulled the trigger. We needed them because they are, they are starting to spark change, but especially for the smaller gyms, I understand being risk averse in that respect for now, at least figuring out it's been like a day, (laughs) you know? Well, I can, I can say my basement gym is unaffiliating. Um, I can't, I can't, I can't speak for, uh, the gym I go to. We haven't discussed it that, you know, it just hasn't come up. I can tell you that, um, they're probably some of the kindest, nicest, most hardworking people I've ever been trained by. And so I don't have any doubts of their morals for whatever that's worth, but I can't speak to whether they're going to affiliate or unaffiliate. Truthfully, I honestly didn't feel like it was my place to even ask at this point. I mean, it's been 48 hours, you know? Right, right. Yeah, no, it's it's a tough decision on all fronts and um, not a tough decision to not endorse those words. That's the one thing I will say is I've seen across the board, like everyone is very quick to be like, no, that's not how we think. That's not how we act. And that's not what we want. You know, we want positive change in that respect. So I applaud the community for standing behind that at least. It's been an interesting time. I applaud it too. It's been, um, I hate to use the word exciting because exciting is absolutely the wrong word, but it's, it's certainly been inspiring to see this mm. many people raise their hand and say, yes. you know what, we're going to get together and as one voice and say, all right, we're going to make a change. Like we're going to make a positive change and make it, take our stand right here, right now. And, mm-hmm. and that part I've absolutely loved. Same. And, huge props to, again, some of these huge named athletes that are kind of yeah. stepping out and doing this. I mean, not, you know, it, clearly it's the right thing to do, but you don't see that in all sports. Agreed. You don't, you don't. And I think that's really indicative of how many amazing people we have in this community. So, When's the last time we did an episode, just you and me? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. I miss like talking to you like this. Like we always have a, we always have a guest or at least we have basically since we got locked down. I know if we're, there's so many new people listening. They're probably like, what the hell are, the these, hell two? are these people? We, are what they did just, we even just listen to? They didn't are, get anywhere. They're like, <laughs> why are they rambling? If they watch it on video, they're like, what's he drinking? Which by the way, is the most basic, uh, Ooh. Have you had these Bon Vie? Of course, have you just asked me if I've had those? Spike seltzers. Though this is not a sponsor, by the way. This is just me drinking. Um, of course. So Na- the fl- name a Spike seltzer. I have had it. So the the flavors are good, but this one's coconut pineapple. And somebody messages, they go, oh. they're like, how's the coconut pineapple? I'm like, it kind of tastes like sunblock. Oh, in a good what way. That? I don't know. All right. I don't know. I'm, is, I'm into it. This is like if you were standing in line at the CrossFit Games, it's like standing behind Pat Vilner. You smell it. That's what it smells like. I can't, I can't drink tonight because I, oh, you'll be interested. I saw my, um, I saw my mom for the first time over the weekend, uh, like since quarantine, you know, just cause she's in that age group that needs to be careful. We've been very, very careful, but here, uh, in Rhode Island a couple weeks ago already, we like sort of opened up restaurants and we've been like going to like have lunch and a drink on a patio somewhere. So I was like, okay, if we're starting to like get back to real life, maybe we can, have brunch outside together. And so she came to my house and we had like a little bit of a distant brunch outside and she brought too many bottles of fancy champagne because my mom is super fancy y'all like the fanciest lady on the planet. And so now that it's, now that it's the start of a work week, I cannot partake in the drinking activities tonight. Just can't do it. <laughs> Gotta have some drinking activities. Got to have some drinking activities. No. All right. Well, I- for the record, I hope all that hit the recording because Bean kicked out my input jack. So we'll it was see. probably no, it's fine. Cut cut all of that out. No one wants to hear about boozy brunch with my mom. Yeah, they all do. <laughs> no. Well, I'm glad I hope everyone en- enjoyed the show tonight. For the record, Bean is my cat. For those of you that are new, you'll hear him on the podcast almost every week. He's part of the show. All right. Anything else we need to cover here? 
Nothing. I don't think so. I think maybe just a quick shout out to everyone who's been listening because we've seen like a huge uptick in the number of downloads lately. And so we know that there are some new people, but we also know that there are some people who have been listening ever since the days that it was just your mom and my mom who were giving us those download numbers. So just, I really appreciate everyone, you know, coming in and listening to us talk about God knows what. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I know people have said to me that, you know, they listen because we chat like they're just chatting with their friends or they're just listening to their friends. And we feel like you guys are our friends too. So I really mean that. Thank you everyone for, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been quite a ride. Yeah. To say the least. <laughs> I'm excited by it. We're going to keep it going. We got a lot of good guests coming up. We have, yeah. we still have three or four that we've recorded. We haven't released yet. So we'll get those out quick and, uh, and lots of new people beyond that. So with that, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Nikki, great talking to you as always you for, too. for everyone listening. Thanks for joining us and we will chat with you guys soon.